Okay, welcome everybody and welcome to today's class. Today we're gonna code uh, our very own our very own TCP server. We're gonna listen for a TCP port and when we get a connection we will send a predefined message and we will close down the program. So very simple server to demonstrate how it's done and then we're gonna build on that code later on. Okay so last time we coded a file called sockets.c this one this did the opposite of what we're gonna do today this is a TCP client that connects to in this case www.yahoo.com on port 80 so that it's the HTTP port it connects and said, sends the head uh, command which uh, checks the headers of the server and then it just prints them out on the screen so what we're going to do today is quite similar only the opposite we're going to be listening for a port instead and then we are going to connect to that and, and see what happens okay so in order to make an outgoing connection we first initialize the socket then we fill the structure with the IP address port and address family we use the connect in order to connect to the server and then write and read to read and write to the server and then we close down the connection we are going to do quite similar things today we will initialize our socket the same way and we will use a, the same structure for the server but instead of the inet address function we're just going to use a zero that means we're listening for all the IP addresses uh, on, on all the IP addresses on the server we're going to use the same way of defining the port and the AF fa family but instead of connect we're going to use a very similar function taking the same arguments producing the same uh, result uh, but it's called bind instead and that basically binds this socket uh, or this uh, structure with these, this initialized socket. Then we're going to use the listen function to establish the listening on a TCP port. And finally we're going to use the accept function which basically waits for an incoming connection and creates a new socket for that one. Okay, I'm going to copy the include files from our old project to speed things up a little bit and then I will create a file called serve.c so we'll begin with our header and all the age files and we'll do everything inside of main just to try this out. Last time we used one socket file descriptor, today we're going to use one for the server and one for the client. We also need a socklent variable which is basically an unassigned integer and uh, we'll call this one address length. This is necessary for the uh, accept uh, function. And then we're going to create two sock address in structures, one for the server and one for the client. And I'll start by erasing these structures using the mem set with a zero. We could use the b0 uh, function, but uh, it basically does the same. So it doesn't matter which you choose. 
So we'll erase the serve and the client. And probably this is not necessary, but it doesn't hurt anything. And sometimes it's good. All right, so now it's clean. We will initialize our server socket the same way as we did before. So the AFINet family and the SOC stream domain and a zero for the third argument. And if socket is less than zero, we will print an error message telling us that socket failed and we'll return minus one. Okay, so now we have our socket initialized. Now we're gonna fill our serve structure. And we begin with our sin family, which is AF inet for internet. And we'll use serve sin address s address. And we'll just set a zero there for all IP addresses. We could also use in address any, which is a constant that does the same. Okay, and then we'll set the port. Let's create a couple of uh, constant definitions, or at least one for the port, and I'm going to use 8181. the sin port will be sent to the ageton s to produce the right kind of ending a number for the port okay so that's the server structure now we're going to bind it together with the socket so we'll call bind and we'll send the socket as well as the serve structure and we need to typecast this the same way we did struct sock address the same way we did with the connect uh, function last time and we'll send the size of serve Okay, so bind works that way that it returns zero if it works. So if it's not zero, we will print an error message telling us that bind fail. And then we will return minus one. Okay, so that's socket and bind. The next step is listen. And listen takes two arguments. One is the socket, S, and one is the queue. So the queue is basically how many queued network connections are we going to keep before dropping them. So if we set a five here, for example, then we can have five simultaneous connections. And for the sake of argument, let's put five in there. And I think listen works the same way that if it... Oh, let's double check the return value. So, yes it's a zero if it works so we can do the same way that we did with the uh, bind and we'll print out that bind failed no listen listen failed and we'll return minus one so 
socket, then bind, then listen. Now we are listening to the, the port and it'll show up in netstat, for example, that we're listening on 0000, zero, zero, zero colon 8181. And now we'll just accept the connection and accept takes three arguments. The first is the server socket. The second is the uh, server structure. Same syntax as the bind directive. And the third is the address to an int. That's basically my address length. Then let me just set this to zero from the start. It doesn't really matter. Um, so we'll send the address to that one. And why do we do that? Well, that's because accept will write the uh, length of the address, how many bytes the address is to this uh, int variable. So we'll just put it right here, like so. I don't think we need to typecast anything. We'll see what it says. And we need to take care of the return value because the return value of accept is a new socket file descriptor connecting the client. So if we like pass the C to read, we will be reading from the client. And we will check if if C If C is less than zero, then accept failed. And we'll return minus one. We will also close the sock. It doesn't really matter, but it's good to code it like that. If you open something, don't, no, don't matter if it's a, a socket file descriptor or a regular file descriptor. Remember to always close it if you don't need it. Same with dynamic memory allocations. Always free the memory allocations. So we'll do the same here. We'll close S and return minus one. Okay, so if it uh, didn't return a value less than zero, it means that it works. So let's print something, client connected. We can also do a similar thing for or after the listen function. So listening on zero 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 colon percent T and we pass in the port. Let's use a constant over here as well. Like so. And what are we going to do when the client has connected? We're going to send some predefined data. I will create a buffer. We're not going to read any real information here, but we need to take care of the input somehow. And we'll create a char pointer with statically defined data. Okay, so Let's begin by reading from the client. So we'll just do read and see buff 511. Then we will prepare our data. 
and let's pretend this is a web server. I will not follow the protocol at this point, but I'll just return something like HTTP version 1.0, something like that. And we will write to see the data with the string length of the data. Then we'll close the client connection and the server connection and return zero. And that should be it. Let's go look through our code. So we begin by zeroing the variables. We initialize <coughs> the server socket. We prepare our structure. And then we will uh, use the bind to bind the, the structure together with the socket file descriptor. After that, we pass on the listening uh, function in order to start listening for our port. Then we'll do the accept. At this point, the accept uh, function will be waiting. It can wait an hour if so. It will be waiting for a connection to connect or a client to connect. And as soon as it connects, the accept function returns a new socket file descriptor for the client. Then we'll just use that client file descriptor to read and to write and to close. And that should be it. Let's save this one and see if we invented any bugs. No, it compiled right from the start. Okay, so let's start up the server like this. No error message. Let's do a netstat dash an grep listen. And as we can see, we are listening for port 8181. And then I will just do a telnet connection to localhost. And I use this end stuff in order to clean the environment variables because telnet has a tenden tendency to send these uh, environment vi variables through the connection. And I don't want, a, want any additional data sent to the uh, server. So 8181, and we will send something like head, pretending to be a web client. And as you can see, we did get the HTTP D version 1.0 back. So our program works. What have we learned today? We have learned to create a TCP server by creating a socket file descriptor from the socket uh, function, preparing the structure, binding them together, listening for the port, and using the accept function to accept the client. And then just use the regular read and write functions or system calls rather to send and receive data. And then we close the connection. We will be adding on to this client uh, server and we will be uh, creating our own sample web server step by step. And this was the first step in order to try out how to create a TCP server in Linuxy. Thanks for watching and thanks for today.